Welcome and get ready to dive into the thrilling world of investments, where numbers dance, money talks, and the unexpected always keeps us on our toes. Lately, the stock market has made a strong comeback. In the first week of November, the S&P 500 jumped up 4% in just 4 days, and the Nasdaq 100 has gone up by nearly 5%. If you follow the news, the rally is mostly attributed to the FOMC's November meeting conference and economic data that are coming out after the meeting. Now, everyone is wondering where the market is heading next. Jerome Powell, in his recent press briefing, revealed that the Federal Reserve is maintaining the status quo on interest rates. For a second consecutive time, the key benchmark rate stays between 5.25% and 5.5%. Many market participants view this move as a confirmation that the Fed is done raising interest rates for this cycle, creating risk on sentiment to the market. The market has been feeling pressure since late summer as Fed Chair Powell reiterated the idea of keeping the rates higher for longer. In particular, the bond market witnessed massive repricing as the 10-year U.S. Treasury yield climbed from 3.81% at the end of June to the peak of 4.98% in October, a move that we haven't seen in decades. As the yield rose, the equity market was down about 10 to 15 percent during the period, as investors would rather keep their money in short-term government bonds which offers an enticing 5 percent return. On November 1st, which is the day of the FOMC decision, yields on 10-year Treasury bonds fell significantly as Powell gave his speech to address the rate decision. It was hovering around 4.9 percent earlier that day, and as the Fed chair took the podium, it ended the day down by more than 10 BPS, a significant move in magnitude for the 10-year. But that is just the beginning. For the next two days, the yields continued to drop and finished the week below 4.6%. The importance of the 10-year Treasury yield cannot be overstated. It serves as an indicator of what might happen with interest rates in the future. When this yield goes up, it usually means people expect interest rates to rise, a situation that the market generally doesn't like. In recent months, concerns about escalating rate hikes pushed interest rates beyond 4%, a level not seen since 2007. This anticipation has greatly affected different ways to invest, especially stocks that pay dividends and ETFs. When bond interest rates exceed a certain threshold, they become more attractive compared to dividends from stocks or ETFs. However, with the recent dip in interest rates, there's a glimmer of hope that we might have hit the peak, signaling a possible reversal for these sectors. Bond prices and yields have inverse relationships. This means as the yields go up, the bond prices fall down. So now when the yields start to decline, bond investors would be happy to step into the market to purchase fixed income bonds. For example, ETFs like IEF that follow the 7-10 to 10 year treasury bond are going up. If interest rates start to go down, we can expect bond prices to go up a lot. However, let's not forget that the Federal Reserve has not entirely dismissed the idea of future rate hikes. Powell says the Fed hasn't made any decisions about future meetings. He pointed out that reducing inflation to their target of 2% is still a work in progress. No decisions have been made for the upcoming December meeting, where another rate hike was initially expected. So, there's still an element of uncertainty. Still, Jerome Powell's recent comments have made the market optimistic. He acknowledged robust economic growth in the third quarter, with the US GDP expanding at a staggering 4.9% annual rate, surpassing all forecasts. He also mentioned the financial conditions have tightened significantly in recent months, which led many to believe that the Fed would not raise rates from current levels to break the economy. Another area Jerome Powell focused on was wages and the labor market, which will feed into the overall inflation picture. The labor market is where people find work, and it shows how well the economy is doing. A strong labor market means the economy is good, but it can be complicated when prices are rising. When there aren't many unemployed people, it's harder for companies to find new employees, so they offer higher salaries. When people earn more, they spend more, which can make prices go up even further because the demand for products and services increases. This cycle keeps going, and the unemployment rate is important because it can change how investors act when new information comes out. The Fed has been keeping a close watch on wage inflation. Wage inflation is an increase in wages and salaries that leads to higher pay. When wages increase, consumers are likely to spend more, which ultimately increases consumer prices. This isn't just any inflation, it's the kind that hits paychecks. It's a significant component of overall inflation, 
contributing to the escalating cost of living and influencing monetary policy. If wage inflation outpaces productivity, it places a burden on businesses, compelling them to raise prices, thus inflating the CPI or the Consumer Price Index, which measures the monthly change in prices paid by U.S. consumers. The Federal Reserve watches wage inflation like a hawk. It's a vital piece in the economic puzzle, dictating monetary policy and the economic climate. When Jerome Powell took to the stage, he shined a light on wage inflation, which, to the market's relief, was lower than predicted. If you look at the broad range of wages, the wage increases have really come down significantly over the course of the last 18 months to where they're substantially closer to that level that would be consistent with 2% inflation over time, Powell said. Making the standard assumptions about productivity over time, it's much closer than it was. This is the kind of news that can lift the spirits of the market, indicating a potential alignment with the Fed's inflation target. Shortly after the Fed's decision last week, we saw the monthly non-farm employment report which measured how many jobs are being created in the economy, as well as wage inflation from the previous month. So, the latest release of unemployment data, non-farm employment change, and average hourly earnings is very important. The wage inflation stands at 0.2% month over month, a music to the market's ears. As for unemployment, 3.9% is a positive signal, suggesting less pressure on inflation. As we wrap up this video, we've witnessed a promising week, with hopes that no further rate hikes will occur in the following months. And the job market data further consolidate the idea that the job market is cooling, which would help bring down inflation over time. Thank you for tuning in to Invest Growth Wisdom. If you enjoyed this analysis and look forward to more, smash the like button and subscribe for more insightful content. Until next time, keep investing smartly and growing your wisdom.